Well, today's the big day here at uh, Tully River Quail Company. We're getting ready to get loaded. <laughs> uh, actually, we're having a happy hour today to launch the the, the business. But uh, we're getting some of the final stuff done. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my uh, incubator together here in front of you so you can see what's what it looks like since it's finished. Um, get the power cord. First thing you do when you get power cords is to take off all the warning labels because they just get in your way and they could be a safety hazard. <laughs> and you find an appropriate outlet that has suitable juice. And you take it over and you plug stuff in. Okay. Okay, as I've shown you before here, let me take this camera and kind of go over with you what I did. So I took this old dishwasher that my neighbor threw away, right? Same thing with the wine cooler next to it. And I've been working on it for the last <laughs> way too long if you ask my wife. And so what I've done is I've put in a LilyTech ZL7901A and also a um, a fan, separate fan controller. Uh, I'll remember who makes that in a moment. But it also has a humidity and a temperature setting. So I haven't decided whether I'm going to run that separately as a continuous fan and let its own control module run it um, or run it through here. I have it all wired in the back under underneath here there is a power strip that i cut the individual cords to the power strip i kept two of them hot but you've seen in other videos where i've send the power from the relay of the unit to that particular socket and then i had just that cable so whenever i plug that into that socket that socket is controlled by the relay of the incubator controller so i have one for the humidifier i have one for the fan exhaust fan which comes out there and have one for the temperature heater the secondary heater so anyway um i cut a hole so i can see inside and i put some lights on notice my little zombie outbreak anti-biden thing and this is what i ended up with I put in some LED lighting that will shine in there when the door is closed and I made all my trays with glass fronts so I can look in and the cool thing about this is you see when I load the incubator is that you can see everything that's going on with the door open but the heat will stay in because everything has a glass front like a secondary wall these are quarter inch um, aluminum by one eighth inch. These are rollers. These are um, floor tile that I had left over. They will heat up and maintain a heat. Um, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to soak these for a little bit just so they don't suck the humidity. But you can see down there, I have my, my humidifier mister. In fact, I'm going to throw some water in there now. <laughs> One of my mottos is I'm, I'm trying to sell quail so you can get six quail, a cage, and a month's worth of food, some starter food. And basically the thing is just like old sea monkeys, um, just add water, right? So same thing with this. To incubate, you just add water. So I have a set amount in here. Um, if you put too much in, it doesn't mist. If you put not enough, it won't last. So that's about where I want to go with it, about half a bucket. And that'll create a nice slow mist 
by the time that goes down through natural evaporation, it'll be it'll mist more, and that'll be good for when the humidity is done. I taped the sensors in the back. The humidity sensor I used two-way tape. The other ones I just taped up because I'm not sure. I might want to throw one of those in one of the trays here just to see. Um, there's my circulation fan. It's from that fan company that is the most popular one that I, I, can't, I keep thinking Accutech. That's not the name of it. It'll hit me. And then I made this heater out of a thing I got from a salvage company. They have a truckload of these things. And basically all it is is nichrome wire and two leads. So I connected the leads, so it's a 220 unit. So I made it a 110 unit and just connected both the inner and the outer core. Put a metal plate over top of it, decorated with some studs. But it's all aluminum, has um, a protective heat barrier. There, but that's cool. That's my secondary heat source. So my primary heat source is the actual dryer or the dishwasher heater itself. And the secondary is that. If that should fail, that'll kick on. All right. The only thing I don't have fixed right now is where I'm going to plug in my egg turnings machines, motors. So I'm either going to put it up here, down here, in the in the well. I'm not really sure where it's going to mount because I'm not sure how far the plugs are going to extend. So I have to wait till I load everything, which I'm going to do now. So I'll set this down. And I guess you can see there. So I have these trays numbered. see they're really cool this motor comes out um, have it wired up so I can take the plug out when I want but these just roll right in here will plug in to there but I'm gonna get them all set first in fact what I should do is I'm going to line up all the motors <clears throat> so that they're all turning at the same area maybe that's good maybe that's not good we'll see Let me just show you how that works. So pretty cool in a three inch space, I'm doing maybe a hundred eggs or a crap load, a lot of them. Um, and again, I'll have to, I'll sink all these so that they're at the 12 o'clock position. when I put them in and like I said this power cord is run by the egg turning relay outlet that I put on the back and the underside of the machine and it goes through the drain hole there so that's one I'm gonna load the rest of them up here I'll probably get them all lined up where I want them and uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's closed downstairs 
as they uh, rest from the shipping. So I was doing a lot of this work on the carport there for a little bit, and my wife's like, you gotta get this out of here. <laughs> so finally I got it to move into the shop. All right, that's 12 o'clock. Um, one thing I need to make sure is that all these are turned on so that they actually get the juice. Okay, here comes number two. And that's pretty much at 12 o'clock. Oh, let me run it right. Might as well check it, eh? Maybe it's not a bad idea to have them offset so that uh, it helps with the airflow. Who knows? We'll do it in a test run next time. Okay, turn her back on. Sorry, right, this is going slow. having all these plugs here. I have this all set up so professionally, so nicely, and now I got all these thing wires. Alright, 12 o'clock. Okay. So as you can see, I don't really lose too much air, too much hot air when I open it. And I'll be able to look in there. <laughs> one of the things I thought about doing was seeing about putting in one of my little speakers. I have these little, little speakers or something. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to raise them with some baby Mozart, see if I get smart quail. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm gonna get these plugged up here, figure out where this is gonna fit. I don't really have much room. I might have to put it on the bottom. But uh, see how that fits. I'll plug it in and give it a test run for an hour or so while I have lunch and see what happens. Finally get this cleaned up. Cool thing about a shop like this is here's how you clean up. There, it's done. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this build. We're going to be here at uh, Tully River Quail tonight at 5 o'clock. Hopefully, it's not raining too bad. Have a couple adult beverages and uh, discuss the upcoming food shortage. Oh, let me show you a little picture of my garden. It's in the back. Yeah, that's one. I have another little one off to the left. Oh, we're getting stuff growing here. I'm trying to plant a food forest here. I'm trying to get crap growing everywhere. I mean, I, I want berries. I want uh, anything I can eat. I want it just growing wild. I don't understand why all these weeds grow. Why don't, why don't we have stuff that grows that we can eat all the time? And there's a little quill. That's my uh, isolation pen. 
that's where I'm gonna put the Caternix here when I get them and I don't know if you can see but over the hill there is where I'm gonna that's where I'm gonna build my pen for these Bob White okay over and out if you're around my house we're gonna have a little party here that guy was here at the last party <laughs> he didn't make it all right over and out save your stuff stay free